test, test, check, check, test, test, test. I have to test my sound out first. Make sure it's working properly. Testing. Testing. Testing one, two. Testing. Testing one, two. Testing. Testing one. Okay, so that works good. I had to move my setup over to my laptop. So I can take apart my PC. Uh, I bought an Ozentech X5 Forte. They don't actually make these anymore. All they do is they're just uh, out of stock constantly. So I had to buy one off of eBay. The reason I bought one of these instead of like uh, one of the newer ones, the Xcore 3D, the new uh, creative products, is because they kind of suck. The X5, the second generation X5 chip is the basically the pinnacle of creative technology at the moment. They're coming out with a Sound Blaster Z, but those aren't out yet, and they may not be for quite a while. There's no actual launch date for them. Let me see here. Give me a second. Freeing up some uh, resources on my laptop so things are more uh, streamlined. The specific Forte I bought, there's also Creative Sound Blaster HD, which I did buy for a little bit, but it, it doesn't support 5.1, and I'm a speaker gamer which means I have a 7.1 surround sound setup instead of headphones and so I need analog outputs for them. You know, I tried going digital but the digital output on the Creative HD actually has lag involved with it which is not not something that I'm looking, I'm looking for. Adding about 10 milliseconds to your sound is killer. Like you can hear the echoes around you when uh, when people are firing. It doesn't coincide with the actual video which is unfortunate because the sound on that thing is amazing so if you're a headphone gamer uh, it's definitely something that may be worth your time but not if you're actual speaker gamer so uh, this is my PC if you've never seen it before, I did a special on my installation for the Creative HD, but that got lost in the sands of time before I started permitting my videos. So over here, you have my computer in a Lion Lee case, of course, with the Zalman heatsink and DFI motherboard. Uh, I'll tear it apart in a bit see more inside. Corsair, gaming keyboard, uh, type N, Razer mouse, although it's very finicky, it has 8000 DPI, that's the newest one they just came out with, and of course my Nostromo and my laptop. So I'm going to pull out my computer, shut it down first. Normally you do drive, driver uninstall, but since I never installed the drivers for my basic onboard sound, besides the basic ones that came with it, uh, I'm not going to bother with that, and you normally run a driver cleaner too, like driver sweeper works pretty good. But I don't really need to worry about that. So I'm going to shut down and pull it out and bring it over. And hopefully I'll turn up the lights too so it looks better.
Let me pop out the chat here. Okay, so here we have my case. I'm going to move you down here. So you can see inside. There's my graphics card. Have my 3 by array of Samsung 830s, which I just bought this spring. You can get them on sale on Newegg pretty cheap now. But they're the best best and fastest drives available currently. And I used to have my sound card in here, but of course that's gone. This is my old sound card. I modded it with a heatsink, which I mean that's just a RAM sink you can buy anywhere. But it keeps it cool. But unfortunately when I upgraded to 16 gigs of memory, uh produces crackling and popping which uh, X5 sound cards are known for unfortunately really nice sound card served me for about seven years eight years which is good I bought a, a Zalman fan which is new keeps things cooler when I overclock my processor further in order to stream better on Twitch and I have 16 gigs of memory down here, as you can see. Of course, there are dims. You can get those on sale pretty cheap on Newegg, too. And I believe I paid $40 for 16 gigs of memory with mail-in rebates, which was really good when I got it. You still can't find it for that. And there is my OCZ power supply. Had that for quite a few years, but... Uh, that's pretty much it. 7870, this is a video card I got back from RMA, unfortunately. These these coolers do not keep things uh, cooler than your standard blower, so don't be deceived by the, all the spinners on it. What you want is the ba the box-shaped ones that actually shoot the air outside your case, so it's not, it's not sitting here and being stagnant inside. You don't want stagnant air, which is bad. But, I mean, people normally are attracted to this because the giant heat sink on it and all the fans are like, oh my god, this has to keep things cool, but it doesn't. This particular heat sink does not have VRM coolers on it either. You need VRM coolers if you want to overclock, or even just for longevity of your, your video card in general. The VRMs are down in there, and there's nothing touching them. Uh, stock heat sinks from NVIDIA and AMD have parts of the heatsink actually conforms to the chips underneath so it keeps your memory your processor and your VRMs cooler. VRMs are very important and people neglect them now because they don't think they're an important component but that's like all where all the poor power is getting sucked through I mean you look how many power connectors you have hooked up to this in addition to the PCI what it's providing through the PCI slot and that's a lot of uh, wattage like I believe this this pulls uh, 90, 90 or 100 watts under load, more than that, like 125, 150. So you want to have your components cool, VRM specifically. But I mean, the only way to tell if the cooler is actually cooling VRMs is to pull it off or just to buy a stock one, or not stock, uh, what would that be called? The base, basic cooler that comes with it, reference, reference cooler, there you go. I mean, they look plain and simple, but they get the job done most definitely. So now I am going to set you up here. Open up my X5 4K. I bought this through Canada through an eBay retailer. So I don't know. It may not actually be in one piece, but it's still in bubble wrap. So I would assume that it's still working properly. Sometimes people will reseal. Sometimes they reseal the packages in order to sell them as brand new. 
even if they aren't. But I'm hoping this particular one I paid 110 for on eBay, but you can get them cheaper. So here we have the box. Fancy gibberish, Ooh, even in Chinese, French, Spanish, wow, look at that. It has op amps. What I like specifically about this compared to the normal X5 coolers, or the X5 sound cards, is this one has a higher sound to noise ratio, which is what everyone's touting, even though they don't have the particular Even if they aren't made by Creative, they use higher quality components on it. You see that? Apparently, it's extremely rare, real. <laughs> uh. The titanium HD I had was 124 SNR or 122. This is only 109, but this also has analog outputs, which is what I really wanted. But they didn't have. Got a nice fold out that we don't really care about because it's for people that don't know how to hook up their speakers. Like, I mean, you got all your breakouts. This comes with the specific breakout cables in addition to digital output for analog. Small sound card. All the creative sound cards normally are full size. This is about the size of a Zoner DX. I also got a Zoner DX temporarily to try it out, and they suck. It's still sealed, so we can assume that it's brand new. See what else they gave me in here. Some cables and crap. Yeah, so they give you a mini, a mini mini bracket. It is still possible to get these off the Ozentech website. I just haven't seen it on there in the last two or three months. So I'm assuming Creative is shutting down the process, uh, the fabrication of the original. X5 chips in order to promote their Soundcord 3D chips. Clear Toss Link or SPDFI link. Never seen a clear one before. Not sure if it actually can see the light in it or not. That's pretty neat. And installation CD that we aren't going to use because we download the drivers right away from the website. Well, we may use it just for. Uh, to get the drivers installed first. This comes, this is a second generation Arlentech Forte. The first ones I read about had problems with um, heat issues. The chip would actually fry itself eventually, so they installed heat sinks on second ones, as you can see right there. Mini, mini slot adapter. I don't know if you have a home theater system that uses small enclosure, sometimes you need these. Nice, but probably isn't helpful for most people. Okay, so back in my system. Here you can see my PCI E slots right there. There's a 1X, there's a 16 and a 16. This is the same color as the one above it, which means uh, slots are split, meaning this gets 16 lanes unless both these are occupied, and then it gets two lanes, which isn't ideal, because ideally you don't want something right next to your other graphics card. This is like the worst possible spot for an expansion card, because then the air can't get sucked into it, and there's no airflow, which is generally pretty bad.
give me a second here. Okay, so we have our X16 down here and two PCI slots. Originally, I had my original creative in it, and but I don't anymore because obviously it doesn't work. And I have an Extreme XFi on board. This is actually a cut down version of the original XFi chip. It's not a full fledged XFi, even though it's on board. And I can't find the drivers for it, anyways. DFI apparent DFI went under. Unfortunately, like Abit, Abit made really good motherboards, but they went under. Or they didn't go under, they stopped making them for some reason. They decided it was in the best interest to pursue markets in like cell phones and accessories, which is completely stupid. Total Waste, a really good company that made really good motherboards. DFI made some pretty decent motherboards, but they sort of went downhill towards the end of their reign, unfortunately. LAN party motherboards. So obviously I removed the slots for back here. Originally I didn't put them back in after I took out my last sound card because I knew I was ordering a new one. I just didn't know when. Here is my sound card. You can have a look at that. X5 Forte 7.1. Even have some jumpers there that I don't know what they're for. Right there. That's an op amp. You can actually replace op amps. When they talk about removable op amps, what that means is you can actually pull this chip out of here and replace it with a different one, which changes your sound quality. Depending on what kind of sound quality you like listening to, uh, that can be really good or, I mean, it really depends. People also say they wear in, which may or may not be true. That may be a placebo thing. You can see it has XRAM on it. This is basically an XFi uh, Sound Blaster Platinum, only it's better than a Platinum. But it's not as good as Titanium HD. Not a Platinum, a Titanium. It's better than a Titanium. Something Forte does that X5 didn't do on the original sound cards, or Creative didn't. As you can see here on the ends, there's pins. Some of those pins can be used for a front, a front jack. I don't know which ones. Like, I know there's actually a bay for it, the Creative Bay, which is bad. They try to sell that as an extra and they get you like $80 on it, which isn't worth it at all. But right there, you have another uh, jack for... I assume that's audio. I can check real quick in the guide I said I never use because I'm awesome. Where'd that go? I throw that out already. Uh... Oh shit. I just had it right here. Derp, derp. Well, anyways, not that important. Ah, oh, there it is. Sitting on my uh, ottoman. Look inside. Oh, they're even in Chinese. That's good. Doesn't say anything about the pinouts on sound card, of course, because that would be too advanced. Anyways, so I'm just going to slip this down here into the X1. Yeah, as you can see, it's sitting down there now. Nice. I'd Technically, I'd rather put it down here, but they'll split up this into X8 slots, and I don't really want to do that.
Although there really isn't any evidence that it would actually slow down my graphics card. Like they've tried, they've benchmarked the latest graphics cards in an X, in a X8 slot, and it doesn't actually do anything. Bandwidth, there's a lot of bandwidth available on PCI Express 2 and 3, 3 especially. I don't know, maybe I will move it down. What I'm trying to avoid is having it right next to my graphics card. I want I want clearance here so it can have room to pull in air. And so the heat won't actually rebound on the back of the sound card. Because that will decrease the length the life of both the sound card and the graphics card. Making a nice cozy hot area. Not my sort of thing. Get one of my thumb screws here. It has a nice shiny backplate too. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a, a pearl black, I almost want to say. That's probably a better view. Kind of wobbly because it's an X1 sitting in an X16 slot. You can do that, by the way. X16 slots are backwards compatible with X1 or anything smaller. X8, X4 can all fit in here. They're all electronically compatible. Technically, you can put your graphics card into an X1. Uh, some motherboards actually have this back area niched. I don't know why they aren't all niched. They should all be niched. You can see right here. So you can slip this graphics card into it. And it will run at X1 speeds, but it should feasibly technically be compatible like you can put this in there and it should just work that doesn't always work though in practice because people don't always adhere to specifications even though they should grab some more thumb screws I'm gonna put my Back plates back in. Thumb screws are really nice if you get a case with thumb screws, it makes it very easy to work with things. This line Lee I bought 10, 12 years ago, I still use it because it's just awesome. Cases don't get outdated. Ideally, I'd want a 120 millimeter fan on the back here, but it doesn't have one. I'm not really worrying though. Like, there's enough room for one too. In the newer line Lees, there is actually a 120 here, but there isn't on this one. And this is a 135, that is a 140, which is what I want. Smart, when power supply manufacturers started switching to the 140s, makes complete sense to just put a fan in the bottom and it sucks all the air up. It's like a vacuum cleaner. It's a great idea. Okay, so I have my brackets in here again. Yep. Everything looks good. I don't think there's a power power connector on it. So we should be fine. Alright, so I am going to hook this back up and replug my system in. Then I can get back into Windows. Oh, this is the analog breakout cable.
custom jobber for the Ozentech. You can see right here, it looks like a monitor VGA cable, but on the bottom it has line in, rear, front, mic in, center, left, right, or center LFE, which is your subwoofer, and side. So 7.1, a line in, and a microphone. On the back of the sound card, I'm going to show you guys that. So here's my port cluster. That's for my motherboard. You can see my motherboard's actually uh, 5.1. So it has a line in and microphone. Nifty. This is actually really nifty. It's a USB and SATA port, external SATA port, which is awesome. Sorry for the mic disturbances, by the way. And here is outputs on my 80, 87, sorry, uh, 7870. You got display ports here, HDMI and DVI. Different about Gigabyte is they don't have two DVI ports, which is really, really unfortunate because I could really use two DVI ports. I assume most people could use two DVI ports, which also can function as DVI or VGA. You can see the four pins on the bottom there. That represents the output for VGA. But anyways, here is the Ozentech. And what you can see here is that is a Toslink. It either can use a US, an RCA cable or a mini uh, SPDIF, which actually slips in the middle there. It's different than normal SPDIF cables, which have their own plug. See, this is a normal SPDIF plug right there, and that's a normal digital. The center is actually hollow on that, so it actually pokes in further and actually plugs into an optical receiver on there, which is really cool. I never heard of them until I started uh, looking at newer sound cards. But anyways, I am going to hook this back up, and then I will do a driver installation with you guys. And hopefully we can play some games.
Oh, just put last year. Has an LED on the side of the card, apparently. Nothing spectacular. What is there? I'm going to put you guys back up on the monitor here. There we go. Put the side of my case back on. Okay. And here we have my desktop without my icons because I don't want you guys to see my icons. And look here at my sound options. Look at all those. All for my sound card, so I have to install the drivers for it. So I am actually going to use installation CD, but just to install the basic software package so then I can update. Because if it's like creative, sometimes they don't include the latest all of the driver options on the actual CD or the downloads. Go here, Osm Tech. Support. Let's see where their downloads are. Huh. Google knows. Google knows everything. There we go. X5 Forte. 
Apparently you're supposed to uninstall the old driver anyway, so maybe I won't even install the first one. Minute and 38 seconds. It's not bad for 200 megabytes. I use Opera, by the way. Still consider it superior to every other browser, except it's starting to have issues with playing Flash now, unfortunately. Pi 64 for testing overclocking, too. Prime 95, Super Pi, Prime 95. Increasing the speed. It lied. box again. Just in case it decides it's not going to work for me. I doubt that's the case, but you never know. The op amps are only for the front left right. They are not for the entire all the channels, unfortunately. According to the box. Progress bar games fun. Here's my old sound card. There is my new one. You know this is actually my this is the onboard sound for the radon. For the seventy eight seventy. That's my old onboard sound right there. Search AZT Forte. Derp, derp, derp. There we go. Let's 
extract that to its own folder. No, it's crapping all over my desktop. I don't want to do that. Where is Auto Run? You kidding me? I was in deck. Set up that exe. Usually they just dump it in the Well, that's kind of silly. There's like a half dozen setup files. A dozen setup files. I'm guessing the newest one is the one we want, though. Why well, you gotta be like that, Ozentech? Well, apparently the drivers are not better than they are with standard Creative Card. I really hope I don't have to manually install everything. That would just piss me off. That'd piss anyone off, actually. Install as in 4K sound. Ooh, Daniel K. Okay, support pack may support the X5 Forte. That was mine right there, the original X5 PCI Fatality. Now I'm using X5 Forte.
I don't believe that they just don't have the. Uninstall your old driver. Download and unzip your new driver. Browse new driver folder and audio to audio folder. Setup folder. Double click setup.exe. Huh. Well, I definitely uh, didn't do that properly. No, we don't want to sound sound fonts. Volume panel, we want. 3D mini, mini player, we don't. Auto mode switcher, we don't. Wave 7, no. Yes. Sound blaster properties, x64. No to plug in. Audio drivers. Adobe Digital Live, we want. Media source, we do not want. That's like a media player that Creative makes that you have to buy from them. Alchemy, we want. Well, we're doing 2.1 right now until my cables come in. They come in on Monday, so I don't have my cables yet. Game mode offers low latency. Next. Installing. Now the waiting game. While we wait for it to finish installing itself. I'm going to plug my headphones back in the back of my computer. The jacks on this thing are really fucking tight. Ah, uh, enable the display device. What? Cancel. Yes, I want to restart. It's good that the jacks are tight on it. It just takes forever to actually try and get them in without breaking it. That means they have better uh, audio connect. It's booting up right now.
Hmm. Normally the icons appear in the bottom right, but I don't see it there right now. Ozentech Forte, Ozentech SPIF out, digital audio out of my onboard headphones for my onboard, speakers for my onboard, digital display audio from, those are all from my graphics card. Set that as my default device, which is what we want. Properties. I have both my my output for my onboard that goes to my TV in the other room. So it's possible to actually just output to the TV and not sound on your computer, which is pretty cool. Now we want to do a speaker test. And it works. Let's see if the higher quality one works. And that works too. Okay, okay. Console launcher. Only difference between this and the normal creative one is there's a little Ozentech logo down here. That's about it. Microphone. Eventually I have to get a front port jack so I can use my microphone on the front. But I don't have one right now. 60... We want the mic boost. Crystallizer will turn off because that does its own little thing I don't like. It depends on your mood. Uh, CMS 3D you want, that's virtual surround sound. It has a channel test on here on the normal creative drivers. It's right there, that button's gone. For whatever reason. No, no. There's my encoder. I could technically use 5.1 right now with my encoder. And perhaps I'll actually do that. I don't know if it has a lag time though. I actually will plug that in. Turn that on. Dolby Digital Live is what we want. I'm going to go plug in. They actually give you... Where'd that go? There it is. They actually give you one of these, which is a mini toss link. You can see where it, where it fits into the connector right there to a normal SPDIF jack right there. Very helpful if you don't have one of these, which I wouldn't have. I actually bought a cable for it off Amazon for my Creative HD when I bought that. That didn't come with a cable. plugged in on the back. Now I'm going to change my receiver mode. T. 
to Digital Optical One. GG. Now let's see if it actually works. And it works. Let's try some audio and see what happens. YouTube. Go for, uh, let's go shoot me. Awesome trailer. Awesome music on the trailer, actually. Comedy, seven psychopaths. Number three, the seemingly normal one. It's not the one we want. Maybe it is. Oh, this, there it is. It's fluid on my screen. They make that look a lot cooler than it really is for a game. That's also the fastest uh, monitor you can get for as a gamer, too. The L227WTG. Bought it about five, seven years ago. Two millisecond response time. And while other monitors claim to have a two millisecond response time, it's not native. Even 120 hertz monitors, so you don't get artifacting or anything like that. Still awesome monitor. Unfortunately, only 1680 by 1050 for resolution, which makes me sad. And it's a TNN panel instead of IPS, but that's what you have to go with in order to get speed, so I'm not really worried about that. But, uh, thanks for watching my installation video. I'll be back in about 
half an hour to start gaming. I am going to do some tests and eat some dinner. But otherwise, that's it.